Hi! In this video, you're gonna learn about the UI button, a core component in the Doozy UI system. Let's get started. So, a UI button contains all the logic needed for a button to work and behave in various ways in order to create complex UI interactions. In order to create a UI button, you go to the hierarchy view and right click it, then go to Doozy UI UI button. Automatically one will be created and if a master canvas is not present in your scene, one will be also created. The UI button is quite complex in its uh, options because you have a lot of features available. First of all, uh, you have some uh, editor settings that you can access from uh, every component. And here you can enable and disable functionalities that you might not want to use. For example, a button can capture on pointer enter and exit, pointer down and up, click, double clicks and long clicks. And it also has options to detect whether it is selected or deselected. And it can perform loop animations when it is not selected and when it is selected. Of course, if you do not want to use, let's say on pointer down and up, you can just disable those functionalities. And they'll also be re removed from all the UI buttons in your current project. I'm gonna leave them all enabled for now so we can talk about them really quick. This window that you see right here is the control panel. And here we have the editor settings with default values for newly created components. So every UI button will have these settings automatically when it is created, newly created buttons. Other options that you have available are you can access the manual and this is directly a link to our website and you will be able to see details about every functionality in this uh, component and of course to this uh, a link to, to this video. You can enable debug mode and relevant uh, debug messages will be printed to the console for this particular UI button. Or if you need to debug all UI buttons, you can go to the control panel, to the debug tab and select UI button. In this particular case, all the UI buttons, so all the UI button component types will print debug messages. It's the equivalent for debug mode, but it works for all the components. In order to identify what button was clicked, we use a system of button category and button name. And these are just simple strings. So we have a list of strings uh, sorted in categories. And let's, uh, let's see them. Here we have two databases, two categories, the example category. And here we have these names and you can also set them and the general category. Let's uh, add a new button name. You just click the plus sign and say my new button. And right away it will be available here. Where is it? So general and here you have my new button. Another way of adding a new button is by selecting the custom category, entering your button name, my second button and selecting the category when, when, where you want to place it. So let's say general. Do you want to add it? Yes. And it will be automatically added to the database. Of course, you don't have to have it open. In order to remove a button name, again, you need to open the database, remove it, and it will get automatically removed. To create a new database, you have to, you either click open database here, or you use the control panel, and you just add my new category. And let's say you want to free one, two, Let's sort them and you will see that now we have a new category with the options one, two, three. This is the rename game object to button two is a convenience button so that you can rename it to whatever button you have. Okay. Allow multiple clicks allows the, the button to be spam clicked. And let me also show you. So let's enter play mode. Okay, so notice that the button is interactable. If, if I click it, it, it doesn't get disabled. If allow multiple clicks uh, is uh, disabled, the button will be disabled for a set interval. So notice that 
for 0.2 seconds, the interactable option is disabled. I'm gonna say one second, and I'm gonna click it and see that it got disabled. One of our buttons is clicked, the Unity's event system tags it as selected. So here it, uh, it is marked as uh, selected and uh, you might not want that to happen. So you have the option to deselect button after each click. Input mode is when a button is selected. For this particular case, we use virtual buttons, submit and jump will trigger this button if it is selected. And let me show you, first of all, what is a virtual button? Well, it's uh, related to the to Unity's input system. So we go to edit, project settings, and here we go to input, and you'll notice a list of all the virtual buttons. For this particular exa example, we have the virtual button named submit and the virtual button named jump. So for jump, we have the joystick button free, and also we have the positive button space. So if I press space, this button will, will get uh, clicked if it is selected. And let me show you, I'm gonna enter play mode. Right now the button is not selected. So if I press space, nothing will happen. But if it is selected now when I press space, notice that it is triggered. Again, if I press enter because it is selected, it will get triggered. Of course, you can also set particular key codes and here you have all the options available. On pointer enter, and on pointer exit are triggered when uh, the pointer enters the button's area and on pointer exit when the pointer exits the button area. And here you have a lot of options from animation options to sound, particle systems, animator and so on. Let's uh, set a simple move animation. So when the, or actually a scale animation. So when the mouse enters the button's area, let's scale by 0.2 in 0.2 seconds. That's it. And when the mouse exits, let's uh, make the, the button jump a bit. Again, 0.2. So now I have two animations. When the mouse enters the, the button's area and when the mouse exits the button area. So you will see a scale animation. And when I go out, the, the, the button will jump. That's it. You can also use presets and you have a lot of presets available. Let's say uh, let's use also a scale, rotating left. Let's load the preset and we can also preview it. So this is what will happen. And uh, let's test it out. There you go. Now let's add some sound. The sound can be triggered either by the soundy, so you use the database. Here we have all the sounds that have been defined in our soundy database, and you can use any one of them. Or you can directly use, if you do not want to use soundy, you can use an audio clip and also reference an output audio mixer group. Or if you're using master audio, you can use that. For this particular example, <clears throat> I'm gonna use Soundy. So I'm just gonna select a click and let's say a sound. Okay. And let's also add a sound on pointer exit. Again, clicks and let's say mouse clicks. Yeah, that's it. So now we have two sounds. Maximize on play. Yeah, that's it. That's very easy. You can also, I do not have a particle system in the scene, but you can also trigger a particle system, trigger an animator, one or more animators. We will uh, show this in uh, uh, tutorials. Send one or more game events or trigger one or more Unity events. These options are available for all the other settings. And here you have click, double click and long click. Let's say for on click, I want uh, to set a, an animation. So I'm gonna say an organic, let's say jelly fast. Let's load it and let's preview it. So you can, I'm gonna zoom in a bit so you can see it. And let's also add a sound. There you go. I'm gonna zoom out again. And now I've just added an animation and a sound when the button is clicked in just 
a few clicks. There you go. Now, let's uh, continue. There are two types of click mode, instant and delayed. I'm going to add a sound and an animation for the double click. So let's say rotate elastic left. And this time I'm going to load the selected preset in left instead of loading it here. And I'm going to set on trigger sound so you can identify them. So let's say, all right. Now I'm going to show you the difference between on click, click mode instant and click, click mode delayed. If it's instant, on click will also be triggered when a double click is triggered. All right. So when I'll click it, this is the click mode. Let me disable on pointer and, and, and exit. So it's easier to see. All right. So on click. Double click. Now, if I set it to delayed, so let's set it to delayed. Now we can differentiate between on click and on double click. And now I'm going to click and double click. Click. This uh, depends on your particular use case. For example, uh, in, a, in a normal OS, when you click on a folder, it will first select it. The click does the selection and the double click does the opening of the folder. So that's why you, you, we also provide instant and delayed. One more setting, long click. Double click has a register interval of 0.2 seconds and long click has a register interval of 0.5 seconds. So you have to keep the mouse down for 0.5 seconds. Let's enable the long click and let's set an animation. Again, I'm going to set a stretch and I'm going to load the preset. And again, I'm going to set a sound. That's it. So let's enter play mode. And now we have the three click types. Click, double click, and long click. All right. And uh, let's say on click, let's set it to delayed so we can differentiate between the two. And let's look at the non click a bit. So click, double click. Come on, where is it? Double click and long click. If I set the interval a bit smaller, let's say 0.2, long click will be activated a bit faster. So if I say, let's say one second, it will take, uh, it, it will take one second before the long click is registered. So there you go. We'd recommend using 0.5 as that is the default value that we also assign to the system. Besides that, you have normal and selected loop animations. Normal loop animation is used when the button is not selected, so it's in um, default state. And selected loop animation is activated when the button is selected in the event system. I'm going to load a simple normal loop animation, and it just got enabled. Let's select something a bit uh, easier to see. Okay. So now we have a normal animation enabled. Let's also enable a selected animation and let's go with a scale. So when I click the button, the, uh, the button will get selected and the scale animation will start working. And now the button is selected. If I click outside of it, it will get deselected. And again, the normal loop animation will start. So deselected, selected. Let's see it. This is the, the selected animation. I'm going to maximize because it is smooth and this is exactly what the end user will see in your uh, game or app. There you go. One more thing, you have a convenience method to access the label if it has been referenced and you can say my button. You can change it from here instead of selecting the label and writing in here. So yeah, that's it. Uh, notice that the button uses Text Mesh Pro. That is because we have it installed. And in this particular case, because I'm using Unity in 2019, uh, I already I have it installed by default and I also enabled it. If it were not enabled, uh, the native text component would, would have been added. So let me create a native UI button and let me show you. So this is the difference from the, between the native UI button and the Duzi UI button. That's it. The simple part is 
Oh, you also have on click, trigger events after animation, on double click the same thing, and long click the same thing. When uh, this uh, option is enabled, the um, actions that um, are triggered by the on click, double click, and respectively long click will be activated only after the animation has finished so that the user has uh, the option to see it. It's a, a small delay, but it is important when you are trying to design it uh, nicely. You can create new presets depending on the settings that you are uh, using. You can uh, load some of the presets that uh, we provided or that you created, and you also can create new preset categories for your uh, own uh, system. There are three types of animations, punch, state, and animator. For the animator, you just trigger an uh, animator and you can trigger a trigger, you can set a bool, a float, or an int, depending on your particular animator setup. For the state animation, I'm just gonna show you one of the examples so that you can uh, see. You have a, um, usually it's used for on pointer enter and on pointer exit. So I'm going to open the example four, and here you'll notice when I, my mouse will move over these buttons, they will go to the to the right, and they will stay there until the mouse exits. So on pointer enter and on pointer exit. Let me also show you the button settings. So for this particular button, the the doozy button, you will notice that we have on pointer enter and we have a state animation. So this time we are using state animation and on pointer exit another state animation. And uh, let's see it. There you go. So that's how, uh, how it works. Okay, that's it for uh, the UI button. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.